Everyone knows about the risks of driving drunk. You could get in a crash. People could get hurt or killed, but that still doesn't stop everyone. You could get arrested. You could incur huge legal expenses, and you could possibly even lose your job. We all know the consequences of driving drunk, but one thing's for sure. You're wrong if you think it's no big deal. Drive sober or get pulled over. Palm is back and available on Verizon. Palm is a small practical companion device that syncs with your existing smartphone, so all your info is seamlessly connected. Palm isn't a replacement for your smartphone, but it has all the same mobility and capability, allowing you to leave your smartphone behind so you can focus on what's in front of you. Go to palm.com to learn more and run to your nearest Verizon store to check out Palm for yourself. Welcome to all of us, because you see, this is the only time this exact combination of people will be in the same place at the same time. What? Is that good? <laughs> because it clearly means this is a fractured group. If it were good, why wouldn't we agree right now, all of us, to do this on a regular basis? <laughs> Inevitably, some people will have their excuses. Oh, I don't live here. That, that's number one with a bullet. <laughs> Boring. Oh, uh, by the time we agree to do that, I'll be dead. <laughs> you think why, uh, so we're not allowed to weekend at Bernie's you into our next gathering? <laughs> I honestly wouldn't mind that if somebody, I honestly, I, I was talking with somebody the other day about whether or not I wanted to be cremated or buried. What's that? That wasn't one of the choices. <laughs> I should have mentioned earlier, this part of the show is known as the monologue. <laughs> and I thought, you know what? I think I want to be cremated because at a certain point, when you're buried in the ground, people stop coming if they ever come at all. People aren't just going around graveyards like, who haven't I seen yet? <laughs> I don't have any kids. That right there, that, that's who was going to come. <laughs> you are. If, you don't, if you're child free and you get buried, dumb, waste of money. <laughs> going there <laughs> so I thought yeah I'll get cremated and I'll get put in an urn and that'll be displayed somewhere in someone's home for a while unlike my dad who got cremated and then buried what <laughs> messages there. <laughs> Look, I want to be just incinerated. Make me as small as possible. And then please make sure no one ever sees me again. I want to, I want to completely vanish from the earth by being under it. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> we're, ha we're having fun. We're having fun. <laughs> so what I'd like is I would like to be in some fancy urn, right? And then decades from now, when all the people who know me, who would be interested or agreeable to housing me in their home, when they're all dead, I, I hope that some, some weird future hipster 
comes into possession of my ashes, has, has no idea who I ever was. But I'm up there with his fucking iguana tank or whatever. I don't know. What are, what are future hipsters gonna have? The, 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 the tarragons? What are those guys? The little tiny guys. Not tarragon, that's a spice. What is, what is it? Tardigrade, tardigrade. He's got like a tank of tardigrades. And it's nothing like the ad in the comic book where they're wearing crowns and shit. <laughs> That's such an old, old reference. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Thompson. I am the second part. This is a show where I invite a special guest onto the program to join me in a free-form conversation inspired by a blind question from our previous episode's guest. Then, I invite some improviser pals onto the show to join me in a narrative improv inspired by a location provided by our special guest and oftentimes utilizing details gleaned from the Avramundas. <laughs> he ended it all scored on piano by Mr. Eben Schletter. That's what he goes like. My friends, as we are traveling, it is my pleasure to welcome some of the members of the Spontane Nation Tour Company back to Brooklyn. Please say hello to Mr. Eugene Cordero. Huge. Let's keep it professional tonight. Right? Yes. Eugene. Yeah. Is this your wine? Yeah, that's my water. <laughs> Nice, Jesus. This is, if I, if I could quote my mother-in-law, this is Grandma's weekend water. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Huge, do you want to be burned up or buried in the ground? Uh, <laughs> I, I, want to be, uh, I want to be burned up. Yeah. And then like LeBron tossed. <laughs> <laughs> like... If it was actually him, that would be dope. Oh, that would be amazing. Uh, if, like, in a, before a game, just he did that with my ashes. Uh, but that also means that it would have to happen soon, which I don't want. What if he came out of retirement to do that? Oh, even better! Uh, yeah, either that, or I want to be, like, the powder in a martial arts movie. <laughs> like, let me all of a sudden... <laughs> eat it... You know, right. it was like a little bit of me. Yeah. Would uh, you settle for being on an old duster in a Western? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'll take anything. Yeah. Or even like, um, like I'd be like, if they remade Bloodsport, I'd be like, what goes into people's eyes? What goes in whoever the new Jean-Claude Van Damme's right. eyes would be? Anyway, it's very specific, but very true. Um, I want to be dust it, for something else. Right. Yeah. Like shuffleboard, even. <laughs> Is it? Oh, well, that's nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, what, like, wait, what are those ones at a bar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The bar. Be, be <laughs> that sand? Yeah. <laughs> Just, I'll be that sand. Put me on a bus. I'll be the vomit cleaner. I don't, like, just reuse me for something that would help. <laughs> Like, there will be a kid on a bus who is very happy that my ashes didn't make him feel like an asshole for very long. Because you helped instantly cover up the smell of vomit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Oh, and I guess you want to smell vomit? Yeah. Judge, judge me, not that kid, judge. Yeah. That right? kid would be so bright red unless my ashes were there. <laughs> Is this something that you've always known, or is this your, have your feelings changed on this? Oh, it changed. It changed. Um, the first time I honestly wanted to be cremated is when I thought about it in a martial arts movie that way. I'm like, ooh, I'd love to be that dust. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I didn't, I didn't realize when we were talking before that that was a real thing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> they, they, oh, well, they, well they, I mean, that was my thought. And then I went, I'd love to be like this. And then to myself, I'd go, hey, but cremated is cool. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's how a lot of, that's how, how I think about a lot of things. Sure. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, oh, shit. Yeah, that's crazy. Huh. But cremation is cool. <laughs> Are you, so you're saying many paths lead yeah, you yeah, to... Yeah, 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 cremation. <laughs> I'd be like, ah, oh, man, this zoo sucks. Like, all of these, you know, these animals in cages. But cremation is cool. <laughs> Eugene Cordero, ladies and gentlemen. to talk about death because I don't want to acknowledge it. <laughs> I haven't figured so out... So can't fucking talk about horses. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, let me pull down the list of Tony's rules of conversation. It's like, you know when you're very famous and you go on a late night show yes. and you have your list of shit? <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> You have a list of, like, no-go topics. Yeah. You know, yeah, when, yeah. like, beautiful actresses are like, I don't talk about my relationships. So for me, I'm like, I don't talk about horses or death. <laughs> <laughs> Were you, is it something that from an early age you became, like, when you, when you learned what death was, you became sort of, it was too big for you? No, I think it's more like, no, at an early age it was great because I was told the myth of Christianity. So I was oh, like... Sure. Death is fine. It's yeah. just a, the second act to this stupid play. Um, <laughs> but now, now that I'm like, oh, there, n nothing happens to you. I'm like, oh, I don't have religion, so I don't have a way to cope with this bullshit. Mm -hmm. So I just want to like, I don't want to think about it because I haven't figured it out. I get that. Yeah. I get that. Because I'm, like I'm not like a smug atheist who's like, I know what's happening. I don't know anything, and I don't like that. It's a fairy tale that people are trying to tell you. <laughs> Is that your Bill Maher impression? Who? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I just don't... I don't like not knowing things, Paul. You know that about me. Yes, I do. I'm a know-it-all. I like to know things. I like to learn things. I like to consume knowledge and then be better than people with my brain. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> So, shout out to the know-it-alls, <laughs> because you can't control how rich you are, really how thin you are, but you can control how much you know and how smug you are about it. <laughs> so, you know, I like to collect knowledge. What's the most interesting knowledge you've collected recently? Mmm, I don't know. Well, you know, I love to travel, so I love having been to places that people are just, like, talking about in the news. Uh -huh. And then when I hear the news report on them in, like, a sensationalist way, I like being like, well, actually, I just came from there. It's very relatable. Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> what are some of these places that the news is reporting on? <laughs> I feel like Whenever people are talking, you know, because lately there's been a lot of talk about like far right nationalism in Europe. Yes. And so when you like hear about these places on the news, it seems like it seems like the, the you know a Dickens novel or something. But I like just having been to a place to have like an on the ground knowledge of it, like a reporter in a hurricane. But it's just me in like a weird part of Croatia. <laughs> How's the alt right situation going over there? Croatia's not too alt right. Good. They're okay. That is a relief. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're doing all right. What's the worst place you've been to? Worst place? You're not going to like it. We've, t we've talked about this. It'll make you sad. We can talk about it again. I hate Italy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that's a big part of your heritage. <laughs> it's like half of your heritage. It is I, half of my heritage. And I don't yeah. like it at all. It's, it's okay. What if you just said to me, I don't like black people? <laughs> it would be so rude. I feel like that's just... 
it's, one step past. It's different. I don't like Italy. It's different. I'm just saying like half things. Like Is it I'm because half. you wanted to say I don't like Italian people? <laughs> no, I just don't like the place they come from. And live. And live. And no, I, I haven't been to every corner of Italy. Maybe some of it isn't horribly racist, but... <laughs> I don't love it, and I feel like it's a place that white Americans love. They're like, Italy, yeah. Italy. And then you go there when you're black, and it's like, oh, there's a, there's a problem here. Right. <laughs> so I don't love it. Why'd you ask me the worst place? Why didn't you ask me the best place? I'm just trying to fill time. <laughs> now we're filling time? Well, is that why this show is ending? Because you've run out of shit to talk to your yeah, friends about? Yeah, what did want to talk about? <laughs> Tony, can I see you over here for a second? Yeah. <laughs> Now look, you have this list of topics that you don't want me to talk about. Yeah. I'm doing the best I can. Look, my list of topics are, you can't talk about horses, death, Italy, uh, <laughs> or uh, fabrics I don't agree with. Now the fabrics are off the table? Some of them are too itchy. Oh, I've never been more turned on. <laughs> oh, why are you eating that slice of pizza? <laughs> For Italy. <laughs> All right. Tony Newsom, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, don't leave me like that again, please. <laughs> did you get scared? I got real scared. <laughs> what did you do while we were off stage? I just waved to people. <laughs> Wave? Did he wave at people? <laughs> did people wave back? Can I see all of you over here for a <laughs> Folks, we have to take a break. During the break, you will listen to the ad. Stay alive, no matter what occurs. I will find you. Oh, boy. Lisa's back. Thank you, Lisa. Here's what Lisa wants to say to you on behalf of me. I'm the intermediary. A quality night's sleep helps you recover from distractions faster, helps prevent burnout, helps you make better decisions, helps improve your memory, and overall helps you make fewer mistakes. Not, it does not erase mistakes. It takes three away. It is not marketing, it's science. To design a better mattress to give you a quality night's sleep, Lisa, the mattress people, leveraged 30 plus years of experience and hundreds of hours of scientific testing, and I'm sure ancient mattress lore, to develop the perfect mattress for all body shapes and sleep and styles. I sleep with my eyes closed. Lisa's mission is to provide a better night's sleep for every body. That's two words. Do you get it? Through their 110 program, Lisa donates one mattress for every 10 they sell. That's more than 31,000 mattresses, and they have not stopped counting. They will continue to count. I will give you an updated figure as it is provided to me by Lisa. Lisa strives to leave the world a better place than they found it. But that doesn't stop with mattress donations. Lisa didn't have to be born into this world. Together with the Arbor Day Foundation, Lisa plants one tree for every mattress they sell. That's a nice thing. Doesn't have anything to do with mattresses. They're like, we need trees. Please, please, please give yourself the gift of a better night's rest this holiday. Get $160 off. I'm resting better already. A Lisa mattress at lisa.com slash PFT and use promo code PFT at checkout. Once more, that is L-E-E-S-A dot com slash PFT. That's not the way I do it. L-E-E-S-A dot com slash PFT. That's more like it. Promo code PFT. Welcome back to Spontaneous Nightmare! Our guest this time out is one of the hosts of Las Culturistas podcast. Please welcome the fantastic Matt Rogers. Thank you for giving me an excuse to get dressed today. Of course. You look very nice. I like Thank the whole outfit. Thank you. It's all new clothing. Makes it even more exciting. 
<laughs> Wait, so everything worn for the first time? Head to toe new. This is this is his real scoop. And this is the, the real scoop is I also wore a denim jacket here tonight, despite it being far too cold to wear just that, because I'm not going to fucking let them take fall from me. That's right. <laughs> like, that's I'm right. going to have fall. Yeah. And that's that. <laughs> Case closed. End of story. That's it, I said. <laughs> that's it, comma, I said, period. <laughs> Matt, I have a question for you. Okay. This comes to us from... <laughs> I love that. This, co <laughs> <laughs> this comes to us from our previous episode's guest. Okay. This guest's question is, mm -hmm. if you could go back in time and kill one person, <laughs> who would it be? Oh my God, this is crazy. What came to my head... Because you did this? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you should ask that. I have many powers. No. Um... <laughs> What came to my head was, because I, I, I don't know, this has been in my mind, like, the very first person who ever started a gay rumor about me <laughs> was my neighbor from across the street. His name was Eric. Mm -hmm. And I felt like the second he said something in first grade... Then it became like a thing, like Matt Rogers is gay. In first grade, and, but the, and like first grade, like what's not gay about a first grader? <laughs> <laughs> Every fucking first grader is gay. We're all laying in each other's laps. <laughs> you know it's I'm, true. I'm not disagreeing. Listen. <laughs> All I'm saying is, I then, as an adult, I sometimes do children's theater. Like, I'll go into, I work with an organization, and we go into um, schools, and we'll do, like, plays for kids. What's based, the organization? It's called Story, story Pirates. Pirates. Yeah. yeah. Do you and guys so, know Story Pirates? Do you Story Pirates? It's fantastic. Yeah, so I'm very involved with them, and the kids will write a story, and then, uh, as a surprise, we'll go back and we'll perform it as a, as a sketch or as a musical performance or whatever, and they're, you know, gagged by the fact that they wrote a thing. <laughs> Um, <laughs> they're like, what? Okay, so, and I went back and I was like, oh my God, these kids are all acting, sorry, but gay. Like, they're laying in each other's laps. They're like loving each other. Boys aren't afraid to be affectionate with each yeah. other. So I, I thought back to my life and I was like, yeah, I thought I was just always acting like a normal kid. And then in first grade, this one kid started like, uh, I think Matt Rogers is homosexual gay. Right. Um, rumor, and so I think I have to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> Not because he was wrong, he was deeply right, but like, <laughs> almost too right. Like, he knew too much. Yeah. So that guy's got to go. It's like when someone, it's like, it's like when someone's too smart, they're dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> I got to go. So this kid, was he a friend of yours? or He no? was, he was he and was... that made it a betrayal, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> so he was like, he was like a little Perez Hilton outing people I before they were ready to out it themselves. It was very Perez of him. <laughs> the narrative was very Perez, although he wasn't also gay. As far as I know, he was a perfectly straight for a first grader. <laughs> <laughs> when is the last time you saw that kid? Ah, oh, years. <laughs> Why? <laughs> My family moved away from that nonsense in third grade. Where was this? What area? It was West Babylon, New York, and Long Island, where I'm from. West we have Long Babylon. Islanders here? Wow. Yeah, my parents, um, they still live there. They live in, my parents lived in Long Island all their life. Mm -hmm. And I was born in Long Island, raised in Long Island, and I thought Long Island was a perfectly fine place to be raised. <laughs> And then I got to college, and um, I went to NYU, and I, they told me otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> I came out of my dorm room, and everyone laughed. They were like, fuck him. Did you have a Long Island accent? A, st a strong Long Island. And I, I try to say not strong, because that's how, uh, uh, that's right. how strong that's it is. That's a tell. That's a tell. It's a big tell. <laughs> My sister lives in Tampa Bay now, or she lives in St. Petersburg. Sorry, not Tampa. <laughs> she, lives, she lives in St. Pete. Much cooler. <laughs> <laughs> um, but she has her accent still, and it's like a point of contention with all her friends. Oh, sure. Um, but I actually, I, I moved to this New York City, and mm. then that's when it became clear to me that I had an accent. Very weird. But I, I thought, 
because I guess uh, everyone I went to school with was like studying acting. Yeah. And they were learning how to eliminate their accents. Yes. And I was sticking out like a sore thumb because I was like, coffee, boss. <laughs> That's one they don't Bo- tell you about is boss. <laughs> <laughs> boss? is a different word than boss. <laughs> like, those are two different fucking worlds. Yeah. Was that the hardest word? Because I, I am from Philadelphia. Yeah. From an early... Thank you. <laughs> G- uh, gritty. You're adorning public, yeah. really. Yeah. Um, I, 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 from an early age, because my sister... I'm, I'm the fifth out of six children. Yeah. So my sister was the oldest. Um, she was the only one who didn't have an accent. And I figured out she used to have one, but she got rid of it. She thought she was better than us. Yeah. So, um, so I wanted to yeah. be there. So I think it was around eighth grade was when I consciously tried to yeah. lose my accent. And do you feel like still to this day you kind of consciously are speaking differently? Because I will... Sometimes, yes. I absolutely. Mean, it's hard for me to not say boss. Yeah. It's really hard, actually. And coffee yeah. is a nightmare. I, <laughs> coffee? That's, that's a task, to say that word. I have to sometimes concentrate to say the word no. And to not say no. <laughs> no. No, I don't think so. No, no yeah. I don't want a Coke or a hoagie. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to go home. That's a tough one. That's oppressive in language because you have to use the O vowel. You have All to. The, it's in so many words. <laughs> the O? There's only five <laughs> vowels, people. <laughs> and sometimes a six. <laughs> <laughs> but rarely ever that six. Is that the vowel? Why, by the way? <laughs> For the idiots. <laughs> 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 when, when did you feel that you had come into your own as a person? All right. I don't think until like a couple, a few years ago, to be mm-hmm. honest with you, because I mean, let's get real, right? Yeah. Uh, I definitely think like, like I grew up gay on Long Island, which is, you know, it's in New York state, but it's not, not a conservative place. Like even the midterm elections rolling in, like Long Island is red. You know what I mean? Like, we have a representative, Peter King, who is, ve- I mean, yeah, for sure, bro, for sure, boo. Um, to the point where I actually thought to myself, like, someone needs to go back there and run against him as, like, a strong, charismatic person. Maybe it's me. <laughs> <laughs> I might be starting my campaign here tonight. <laughs> no, but... <laughs> um, I've told too many, like, anal sex stories on my podcast, so, like, I can't... Um, but anyway, but like, it's, it's a relatively red area. Mm-hmm. And so I was like closeted, yes, but also deeply closeted in terms of personality for so long. And yeah. I think something that people don't realize about when you come out of the closet is you don't just come out of the closet in terms of your sexuality. You then have to like negotiate how you're going to tell the world what your actual interests are. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So it's like, I used to, we used to get like a questionnaire when I was in middle school where it's like, who's your favorite musical artist? And I would want to say Christina Aguilera. (laughs) Sorry to the Britney fans. (laughs) (laughs) Like a fire starts at the back. It was was a time of choosing sides. Right. Yeah. (laughs) A divisive time in America. We've been there before. (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) um, (laughs) You young people, you don't realize. (laughs) This is but, cyclical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but at the time, what I would write down was Limp Biscuit. <laughs> it's like it's like documented. Like I I it's documented. I was walking around this plane. Yeah. <laughs> saying. I'm into Limp Bizkit. Yeah. <laughs> because I thought that's what straight people like. <laughs> <laughs> never heard a song, never heard one single song, except, except the Nookie, sure. which is a bop. The Nookie is a bop. <laughs> that one, I, I went, keep rolling, roll. Wow, maybe I am into Limp Bizkit. 
<laughs> okay, well, obviously I'm, I'm a Limp Biscuit queen. And, and that's that. You just created a whole new genre right. of person. <laughs> like, now, like, their, their, like, rare performances are going to be all gays. Like, <laughs> No, but um, anyway, like what I what I what I mean by that is like you come out of the closet and everyone's like, we accept you, we love you, but then you have to be like, oh, I actually also like all these things. These are my interests, mm-hmm. and I think like that's that's hard. Yeah, is like because then you've denied who you were for so long that you don't even know who you actually are, and so then you have to like neg- you have to find out. Well, now that it's safe for me to be me. Who am I? Mm-hmm. And I remember, like, coming to college, like, the other gay guys at NYU bullied me way worse than any of the straight guys on Long Island. Way worse. Because they were like, ha, we were here first. We found out who we were first. Mm-hmm. Like, fuck you that you couldn't do it. It, it got a little ugly. And so yeah. it's very confusing because you think as, like, a straight teen from Long Island, you're going to go to you know, this liberal city, this liberal school, and you're going to find community. And it's not that easy because you're damaged. Yeah. Hmm. And you're encountering other people who are also at the most insufferable period of their life. And also that. (laughs) Yeah. And very much also that. It's like, I I would look back now and it's like, you asked the question, who would I kill? Mm -hmm. None of them. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like, (laughs) let's kill the five-year-old instead. (laughs) Get him early. (laughs) Because I guess, correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah. you feel that the, the experience in college was, it kind of, it, it, it motivated you in some way because it's like you're now, at least these guys being mean, yeah. it makes you think about something. Right. It, makes you, it makes you consider, well, am I being who I am? And you know, you're getting there a little bit faster maybe than if somebody hadn't been mean well, to you. Well, it's a thing where it's like you establish your identity. When you're closeted, you establish an identity. You, you create one for yourself. A cover story. A cover story. Yeah. Very, uh, I love that. Yeah. And so... <laughs> <laughs> Really, and so it's like, it's like this is like, and, and you're broadcasting it. And I actually got very good at creating like a, an identity. Like, had no friends in freshman year. By the time I was a senior in high school, this isn't like a good thing. This is just to show you how good I got at playing the game. I was prom king. <laughs> like, I was, I was like, I really worked hard at being like the straight guy mm-hmm. who was like the guy everyone liked. And then I thought I won high school. You know what I mean? Right. I was like, well, how do you do better than that? <laughs> then you get to college and everyone looks at you in your hemp bracelet and they're like, ha ha, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, we see you with your pop collar and your hemp, bitch. <laughs> and then like, and then you're like, whoa. So it does kind of force you to say, I can't continue. I'm too tired yeah. to keep establishing this identity. I have to be myself. Let's try that. Mm-hmm. And then, you know... It, it worked out, but, but, and then I got to have sex with all the people who made fun of me freshman year of college, so that's good, too. That's got to feel good. That's got to feel good. And they were all mediocre lays. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Love, like, your bully when you're, like, in a really hard time when you're a freshman in college, like, how dare you? I'm gay. You're not. You're fake. And then they come back, and they're like, please fuck me. And you're like... <laughs> Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Rogers, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, fuck, we have to take a break. During the break, we will procure a location for our improv from our guest, Matt Rogers. And then when we return, we're going to do that improv. What that horn can only mean it's time to talk about Robin Hood. Robin Hood is an investing app that lets you buy and sell stocks, ETFs, options and cryptos, not cryptids. You cannot get the Mothman through a Robin Hood. And all of these are commission free. So even if you are a stock market newcomer, you can invest for the first time with true confidence. How, how about that for a change? Oh, I'd love it. 
while other brokerages charge up to $10 for every trade. That doesn't even seem. Robinhood doesn't charge commission fees, which means you can trade stocks and keep all your profits. That's what you want to do is keep those profits. And with a clear design and easy to understand charts and market data, Robinhood lets you place a trade on your smartphone in just four taps. Uh-huh. Those three. Or if you're on the web, you can view stock collections like the one hundred most popular, as well as sectors like entertainment and social media and more curated categories like female CEOs. My voice went up in the end because I was excited. That's if you're on the web. You don't have to, but if you're in a web, you, this is not your first priority. Plus, you can discover new stocks and track favorite companies with a personalized news feed and get custom notifications for price movements so you never miss the right moment to invest. Robinhood is giving listeners a free stock like Apple, Ford, or Sprint to help build a portfolio for you. Sign up at spont.robinhood.com. That's S P O N T dot Robinhood.com. <laughs> Welcome back to Spont. by our guest Matt Rogers but first just so as you know in order to aid us in our storytelling we use three sound effects that move us about in space and time let's say we're in a scene we need to travel into the past for some reason someone's having a memory we're learning how something came to be anytime we travel into the past we use this flashback sound effect yeah classic harp glissando <laughs> but you can't stay in the past forever folks Let's say we want to return from the flashback. Got to get back in time. Anytime we move forward in time, we use this flash forward sound effect. Now. This final button moves us only in space, not in time. Let's say we're in a scene, we need to find out what's happening at the exact same moment somewhere else. Moving only laterally, sliding doors style. We use this mean while sound effect. Past, present, future. Everyone gets it. Friends, it is time to reveal the location for improv provided by our guest, Matt Rogers. That location is Orlando, Florida. Orlando, Florida. We take you now to Orlando, Florida. Oh, it is hot. <laughs> I don't know how you mean. I mean the weather is hot. To me it feels quite temperate. You don't realize that it's this hot. I don't know, my skin feels normal. Will you hold on just one second? I need to confer with my colleague. Sure. What is it, Darius? Josiah, I do believe. Yeah. This person here is putting on some kind of act. Yeah. Uh, there's no way that this person does not feel that it's very warm and cozy. Uh, yeah. You know, you're laying the floor. I mean, it's obvious we're all covered in sweats. We're glistening. Yeah. Even well, her neck is covered in the sweats. I can see it. <laughs> Glowing like the North Star. Yes. Her sweat is glowing like the North Star. But do you, Josiah. Yeah. Do you not agree because the way you rephrase what I said. No, 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 I do agree. You do agree. It took me a second to say it again out loud to realize uh, sweat can glow like a star. Right. 
then we all in agreement. Yes, as always, we eventually get there. Let us return. Ah, yes, to this mysterious stranger. Oh, miss, pardon me, Mill. Sorry for keeping you. Well, you weren't waiting for us, but <laughs> I'm sure. Nonetheless, <laughs> nonetheless, it is your polite for a lady to be kept waiting for gentlemen, whether she is yeah. waiting or not. But if you want to continue eating peanut butter, please do so. <laughs> Enjoy your peanut butter. <laughs> now. I'll stretch my question out, because it'll take a long time to get it down the old gullet. In my mouth, yeah. Probably a teaspoon would have been better than a table. Well, uh, yeah, too much. Too much. Yeah. Then I will... I will elongate my questionary tactics. Yeah, Did good. you not see at that thermometer over yonder yep. that the temperature is in the mid hundreds today. I do see that, and I am merely saying that it feels good to my body. It is also why I'm having a refreshing <laughs> peanut butter tasting. Whoa, is this a peanut butter flight that I see before me? <laughs> it is. Wow. One is actually an almond butter. Wow. I'm oh. sorry to the environment. Mm. <laughs> yes, almonds are a blood nut. Yeah. Please don't say blood nut without <laughs> consent. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me talk to you for one yeah, moment. Would you please? <laughs> when we talk to... Females, we right. must keep in mind there are a couple of phrases we must stay away. From. Well, certainly. One, of course, being blood nut. Blood nut. The others I have forgotten, and I hope oh, they dear. don't come up. I hope they don't come yeah, up. Yeah, as well. I wish you would know the rest of the phrase. I put them on a piece of paper, but then that paper got sweaty. <laughs> And the ink drew, it ran down, and it all became just a dot. An occurrence all too common here in Orlando. Oh, Florida. it is so hot. <clears throat> Sorry to keep you. We do apologize <laughs> to keep you waiting. Now then, now that you have your <sighs> almond butters and your natural peanut butters. And Let, let's take a look. We got an uh, almond butter. There it is. Yes. We have a uh, crunchy. Oh, here it is. There. Yes. Uh, smooth. Oops, there it is yes. for everybody to see. Then we have organic with the slime on the oh, top. Oh, my God. Yes. As though it's been sitting, but that has already been mixed. <laughs> it is the old salad dressing of peanut butter. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then there's the... Uh... Yeah. You know how it separates, the yeah. oil separates from... But, but are you saying that you use it as a salad dressing? I can't give away my secrets. Oh, what a mysterious person we have in our Yeah. Uh, Ma'am, we must uh, 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 let you know that... Uh, and forgive us for our rudeness for <laughs> Yes, of course, so. of course. But you are exotic to us. <laughs> we have never met a person with your particular speech patterns or peanut butter flights. <laughs> Usually people come in here with one peanut butter. At the most. What are you saying? I am just an average person who is from here, Florida. The devil you say! Is that one of the phrases? Not yet. <laughs> You're from here in Orlando, Florida? I am. That's why I'm sampling all of your local peanut butter and almond butters. Which would also be your local peanut butter <laughs> yeah, and almond butter. Yeah, that's what I said. That's what I said. I said our. I said our. You misheard me because you're growing old. Yeah. Would you, <laughs> would you forgive my colleague about myself? Just, what, 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 what? Nope. I'll start on the jams next. <laughs> Now, did you hear what I heard, Josiah? Yes. She maintains that she is from here in Orlando, Florida. But yeah. she's got a peanut butter flight. And she's got such a unusual way of speaking. And she denies... <laughs> she denies that the heat is oppressive, which is all we like to talk about. I mean, right now, I can see the North Star and the... 
Big Dipper for me. Oh, okay. Can I... On her back from all the no, different no, no, points I, I know, yeah. where it is wetter, so it makes a dipper. Oh, okay. You know what? You pulled it out. Yep. Shall we? Let us return. So sorry to keep you waiting once more. Yes. It's all right. You came at the perfect time. A marmalade snuck into the bunch. <laughs> well, well, well. <laughs> if it isn't for that sneaky marmalade. As the old expression goes, <laughs> if you ain't careful, a marmalade will sneak into the bunch. Um, that might be one of them. <laughs> I do hope I did not offend you when did I said... Did we offend you by saying uh, marmalade might Hold sneak on a into second. a bunch? She said it first. <laughs> oh. <laughs> But you said it after me, so you're right to apologize. Well, then I do apologize, yes, and I well. hope that my apology is accepted. You are very polite men. Could I use both of your handkerchiefs that are in your pockets? Well, sure. Of course, madam. Right here. Thank you. My hand kerchief. Thank you. My hand kerchief. Thank you. <laughs> Did you know that Tom Hanks, the son of Colin Hanks, has started... <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, yes. He has started. I saw this on Instagram. Uh -huh. the, the photographic application. Yeah. He has started a kerchief business called Hank's Kerchiefs. <laughs> this is a 100% true thing that I am telling you. And we are talking about Tom Hanks. The son, son of no, Colin, Colin Hanks. Hanks. Because, no, wait, is that what I said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. oh, no. Excuse me for one Would more you, minute. Who's a fool? <laughs> Oh Josiah. Oh Josiah. This, this is a this is a disaster. This stranger has flustered our whole system. Well, I've I've misspoken. I've, I've never I've never mistaken Colin Hanks for Tom Hanks and Vice Never! Person. Never in your whole life. Never in my whole you life. You have always talked about Tom first. When I talked about uh, the, uh, my favorite movie, The yeah. Terminal, yeah. I very clearly stated. Yeah. That the star was Tom Hanks. Yeah. And when I'm talking about my second favorite movie, Orange County, I very clearly said Colin Hanks, Tom Hanks' son. Yes, of course. What has come over me, Josiah? I believe it's the way that she speaks. There's something. <laughs> it is the way that she speaks. Now, what is she doing? Some kind of windmill action. Wait a minute. We must discover more. Very sorry to keep you waiting. You startled me. Oh, I'm so sorry. We apologize, ma'am. We were only mere inches away. I was just over here enjoying the Floridian activity of handkerchief uh, simulated plane controlling. Oh, that is our favorite thing to do at all times. Yes, it it's is. Where I borrow the handkerchief from two strangers in Seersucker and then I attempt to land a plane. After eating several jams and peanut butters. Would you excuse me and my colleague for just one moment? Now would you excuse me for a moment? Oh, this is unprecedented. Yeah. Can I see you guys both over here? <laughs> oh, 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 all right. Yeah. I mean, uh, let's go over here. This is so <laughs> teams. Yeah. It, it seems very unnecessary. <laughs> But the walk will do us good. It will. Sometimes my calves give me cramps. <laughs> now, what is it, dear lady? Please, you, you mustn't cry. You must tell us what is the matter. Yes, and the way to stop yourself from crying is to push on your cheeks. Yes, as you're, as you're doing. As you do. I can't tell if you're giving me real advice or fake. No, it is real. We only give sincere advice. We only give sincere advice. Okay, you guys, you've clearly found me out. Your manner of speech, it has altered itself. Yeah. <sighs> guys, I've been living a lie. I've been trying to be a Floridian. I've been trying to do all the things you guys do. Eat peanut butter. Right. Speak in stilted, perfect English. Exactly. <laughs> That's the way we speech. <laughs> handkerchiefs around. As we were about to do before you interrupted us and bought our handkerchief. Just in case there was a plane. <laughs> but you guys, you sniffed it out. I don't know, you're some kind of Columbos or something, but you figured out that I'm not from here. And who wouldn't want to be from here? Home to most most of the places that a gator has killed someone in America. Yeah. True. Yeah. We do boast that statistic. Yeah. yeah. We do take pride in the fact that all you have to do is sit by some water. 
or and even be in your goddamn house. <laughs> <laughs> and the gator will snatch your baby. The gator will we'll find a way. <laughs> If there's one thing we know for sure, the, the gator, gator will, will find a way. And I've tried to learn all your cool sayings. <laughs> like, the gator will find a way and to neckties. To neckties, make, make a right. Make a right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. But you guys, you found me out, and I don't know what to do. I don't know who I am now. And it's a serious problem for me. Wait, 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 now, hold on now. Yeah. No. <laughs> young, young, young lady. Young lady. I tried to be a coyote too, and it didn't work. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. You guys have so many cool local regionalisms. Yeah, hey, hey, there's no reason to go back to where we were standing before. Let's stay over here. I yeah. would never. I can't go back. Exactly. My cover's been blown. Stay here. This is a place of truth. Yeah. Now, young lady. Yeah. You have admitted you are not from around here. No, I'm not. Where are you from? Well, I was an army brat. So I guess you could say I lived all over. Because you was in the army? <laughs> Ten hit. Okay, I cleaned out my barracks and I just wanted, you said I could watch two Teletubbies if I did it. Is that what you think, you bucket of shit? <laughs> you make me want to puke in your face and then rub it around. <laughs> Keep that salute okay. up, soldier. <laughs> I'm sorry, my bones are still soft, so it's hard to keep poses. You better start growing, sir, or there's going to be a problem. Did, you also said that maybe there was a Tonka truck, maybe? Are you back talking me, soldier? I legitimately don't know. <laughs> but thank you for this opportunity. I've loved seeing the world, but I think I want to go to school. <laughs> You'll go to school when our job is done here in Afghanistan. <laughs> wow. Well, I'm sorry, did you say you were five years old stationed in <laughs> Afghanistan? Yeah. Thank you for your service. <laughs> Problem. It's just like we've been there so long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That I was that young. Right. Yeah. We should get out of there. <laughs> it is not our place to discuss. <laughs> uh, it is considered ungenteel yeah, to discuss yeah, 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 Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I don't know your Floridian ways. It's all right. No, 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 it's more like, like, oh, you got it, you got it. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. I don't know what that is. You'll get it, man. You'll get it, you'll get it. I'll never get it. You'll get it. You're very close. You are very close. No, I've been trying to do this for years, you guys. Young lady. <laughs> why, why, why do you feel that you can't be yourself here in Orlando, Florida? The most welcoming place yeah. in America. <laughs> no, you guys just all have such a strong sense of self. Look at you. You've probably been clad in seersucker since you were five years old. Yeah. I don't have that. <laughs> I don't have that. I have no. I have no identity. I've been denying it so long. I have nothing to cling on to. Well, Will you help me discover some interests and hobbies? Well, I, I, I don't see why not. Yeah. I mean, we are genteel gentlemen who like to help people in need. One more time. We are genteel gentlemen, gentlemen who like to help people in need. One more time. We are genteel gentlemen who like to help people in need. So we are. We are genteel gentlemen. We <laughs> like to help we people help, in help. need. You know what? I'll write it down for you. Okay, yeah, just write it down. Can you... It's still just so many scribbles. Okay. Sounds like... Yeah. yeah. Sounds like... Movie. Movie. Uh, it's a... It's Thomas Crowderfield. 
Anyways. A movie about a genteel gentleman who yeah. liked to help people in need. Yeah. Any, now I get it. Yeah, yeah. Genteel gentleman who liked to help people in need. I yeah. get it. Okay. And scooters. Well, That's the... No, <laughs> no, that is it. That is Thomas Crown. No, no, not no. talented Mr. Ripley. No, that's uh, he's on a scooter. Oh, talented Mr. Ripley. No, 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 no. That, that takes was... place in my favorite country, <laughs> Italy. <laughs> you like it there? I love Italy. What is it you like so much about Italy? That I'm a white woman. I believe I saw that on a brochure. Yeah. A white woman just having a blast? Yeah. yeah. We do. That's called travel for white women. Yes. All I right. didn't eat, pray, love. I went there, I ate, I prayed, and I just, I loved both of those things. You did all in the one country. Yeah. <laughs> I, you don't have to leave. Guys, <laughs> a lot has been said. True, true. But what I want to get back to is what are what am I gonna like now? Young lady, what matters is what's my name? Okay. <laughs> I, I kinda thought that was something you were gonna provide. Yeah, yeah, for us. yeah. What's, you never what, asked! What's no your one name? ever asked. What's your name? What's my name? What's your name? What's your name? Yeah, huh? I'm gonna say your name is Jerezebel. <laughs> yeah, that's the same name I was thinking of. <laughs> Joe what, Rezabelle. Was I close? You were right on. Oh, you just seem like a Jerezebel. You seem like a Jezebel and a Jere put together. That's what my mom said when I was born. Oh, she's so beautiful. What are you going to name her? <laughs> We're mean nurses. Yeah. I like you too. <laughs> I don't know. She kind of looks like a little Jezebel, doesn't she? Yeah, kind of, what a little but not all the way. Yeah. yeah. But she also reminds me. But she also reminds me of that actor Jerry Burns. Who? I Jerry Burns. His name is spelled J-E-R-E. -E. It's the only J -E -R -E. Jerry ever to spell his name that way. Uh. He was on that show Dear John with Judd Hirsch. Oh. <laughs> One where he wrote a dear a John, a dear yeah. John letter, his wife wrote it to him. That's right. That was the opening title sequence. <laughs> That's all I ever watched of it. Yeah. Well, why would you watch more? What a snore. <laughs> anyway, I'd like to combine those two. So maybe something like, I don't know, Jerezebel? Can I tell you something? Yeah. I'd like to award you Mother of the Year. Yeah. Oh, my God. I for sure would. <laughs> What? You seem on the fence about it. I'm so tired. Because we work with, you know, all these mothers and babies. Most right. of them are so dumb. Some of them are oh. so dumb. You are the best. You are by the far. smartest mom. Oh, yeah. like, am I really? Especially oh, yeah. naming your baby that name. It's yeah. Which fucking name? awesome. Which name? Jerezebel. That's right. Jerezebel. Jerezebel. You have style, you have class. The rest of these mothers are pure trash. You hear us, mothers? You pure fucking trash. suck. Fuck you. God. I thought that was oh. going to be a rhyme for a second. You have style, you have class. The rest so of these, these mothers, mothers are pure trash. They can eat my ass. <laughs> okay, excuse me, punching up my. Yeah, you know what I mean? You know. Thanks a lot. Oh, Thanks no. a lot, uh, Kendrick Lamar. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I've. I've made enemies of the cool nurses. Yeah, how dare you come into our place of business and tell us how to rhyme? Yeah. Mine was a slant rhyme, BT dubs. <laughs> you My know what you should do with that baby? Sell it to the army. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, that is an interesting story on its own. It's not a story you hear every day not about a mother and a daughter. Not at all. Thank you so much. Well, I'm glad. Okay. <laughs> I just need to thank you for finding me interesting. But of course, you're you a fascinating are. person. Most people don't. Everyone passes by me here at the Trader Joe's, and no one takes any of my samples. Well, to be fair, there's the samples you're supposed to give out, and then you have these peanut butters on the side. 
and yeah. you're eating the peanut butter. Yeah. It makes you seem unapproachable. And honestly, they're not even from Trader Joe's. These are peanut brother, peanut brothers. Yeah. Peanut These brothers? are peanut brothers. Those are peanut brothers. Not the peanut, peanut butter. brothers you bring from another store. Uh. Peanut brothers. <laughs> you have yet to learn all of our expressions here in Orlando, Florida. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, I need a new marketing tactic for peanut butter because I do feel like... I mean, they're all the same, right? They seem like they're all the same. Yeah, 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 Daryl. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 I'm just thinking. Daryl, you're not going to outpace me. Ah, uh, let me Let me think about it. Roxanne, just give me a second to think about it. Daryl? How's the peanut butter project coming along? Uh, all right, Jim. You know what? I'm sick in this family of being the only peanut sisters to a couple of real peanut brothers over here. How dare you say you're sick in this family? I am. Papa Jiffy wouldn't want it this way. You keep Papa Jiffy's name out of your mouth. I will put Papa Jiffy's name in my mouth like it's a chunky spoonful that is entirely too big. Meaning I will chew on it as long as I please. Daryl, I'm never speaking to her again. Uh, you broke up this family! Oh. I'll crush this cigarette, and I'll put a little bit of the ashes into every single peanut butter. <laughs> and when I die, I want a little bit of my ashes put into a bunch of peanut butters. And whoever is lucky enough to get a mouthful of me will remember! <laughs> I'm sorry, what were you saying? Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess what's weird is like we've inched closer back to my workstation over here. So yeah, we have. If you don't mind, I guess I should probably get back to work. Unless you guys think I shouldn't, and you can think of some other thing for me to do. Jorez Bill, you must do what makes you happy. Well, you're already starting to speak more like a human being and less like a robot. Yeah. What? This is how I should sound? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just like this? <laughs> yeah, you're getting closer. Maybe if you start accepting the heat, it might help you a little bit more. If you acknowledge that it is stiflingly hot and no one likes it. I thought people in Florida all just acted like it wasn't happening. That's for outsiders, dear. Yes. Oh. Everybody here knows it's fucking hot as hell. <laughs> When okay. people not from here come here and they complain about the heat, you have to make them feel like they're being a great big baby. But in reality, heat is heat and no one likes it. Yeah. Okay, what else do I get to do to accept my Floridian current heritage but not be an imposter? Well, well, do you have any hats? Well, I have a trunk full of dumb fedoras. <laughs> That sounds like a tale for another time. <laughs> no, we have, we have plenty of time. Do you so. want to hear no, no, it? I don't no, think no, so. Yeah. I think we got a lot no, of time. No, it's going the other yeah. way. No, that seems like it's No, now it's no. going up. That's bad. It seems like we should talk about no. it. No, Jerezebel, that is the opposite of what we do here in Florida. What? Take too long to do things? Your elections would beg to differ. <laughs> <laughs> Jerezebel. Despite there being good people here. Uh, huh? That was spoken like a true Floridian. Yeah. Don't you see? You've been from Orlando, Florida all along. In your heart. Yeah. I have? I think. <laughs> yeah. No. Telling me I'm from Orlando, that is hands down the nicest thing anyone has ever said to me. Oh, so sad. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Hey, you guys wanna? Couple bites of some peanut brothers over here? <laughs> I wouldn't say no to a peanut brother. I've never said no to a peanut brother. Ooh, I'd like to sample that uh, ashy gray one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I heard a tale that there's humans inside of oh, oh. Well, Josiah, that is a tale for another time. All right.
came to both shows. People have come here for multiple years to come see my shows. It means the world to me. Thank you so much. I love coming here, and I will see you next time. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. And good night. Thanks for listening. And don't forget, Palm is back and available on Verizon. Palm is a small practical companion device that syncs with your existing smartphone, so all your info is seamlessly connected. Palm isn't a replacement for your smartphone, but it has all the same mobility and capability, allowing you to leave your smartphone behind so you can focus on what's in front of you. Go to palm.com to learn more and run to your nearest Verizon store to check out Palm for yourself. This holiday season, please remember to be safe. Everyone knows about the risks of driving drunk. You could get in a crash, people could get hurt or killed, but that still doesn't stop everyone. You could get arrested, you can incur huge legal expenses, possibly even lose your job. We all know the consequences of driving drunk, but one thing's for sure, you're wrong if you think it's no big deal. Drive sober or get pulled over.